Trims off, solid state and true timber as well. It's noticeable to me that when I use a 4K mouse, it just feels more responsive. Hey guys, welcome back to another review. Today we're looking at the Pulsar X-Lite V3, and big thanks to Pulsar for sending this unit out to me. So as we all know, Pulsar released an updated version of their entire lineup, along with a few new shapes late last year. The X-Lite V3 was part of this release. It had overwhelmingly positive feedback so far, and I'm happy to confirm that my opinion is no exception. So the quick summary of this mouse is that this is easily, easily the best Pulsar mouse I've held to date regarding quality. More so than any of those X2s that I've reviewed in the past, or even the X2H. The build is phenomenal just like the X2H. The sensor placement, while not being ideal in my opinion, works just fine. The clicks are the main difference, and they're simply phenomenal. Easily the best optical clicks I've ever used. If anything, this might just be my favorite click of all time now. It's lightweight, solid skate design, and all in all, just a flawless mouse. In my opinion, one of the top two ergos on the market, along with the Thorn. So the X-Lite V3 being the go-to for palm or relaxed claw hybrid, while the Thorn for purely claw or in a more aggressive styled grip. So disregarding the shape aspect, this is one of the best built mice I've tried in quite some time. So the X-Lite V3 comes in the generic, newly updated Pulsar box. Inside the box you're greeted by the mouse, and then underneath the mouse tray you can find the uh, receiver, and then inside here will be some USB-C cables, the warranty cards, and all of that. So nice simple unboxing experience. The mouse retails at 170 AUD from Osmod Shop for those of us here in Oceania. Otherwise, it's 100 USD from the Pulsar website or whatever your local retailer is. It's available in three different sizes and this one here is the medium size, otherwise referred to as size 2. So straight into build quality, this needs little mentioning. The build quality on the X-Lite V3 is simply excellent. This is one of the best built mice I've touched in quite an extended period of time, along with the uh, X2H here. There is simply no creaking, no flexing. The mouse feels extremely sturdy in hand. I don't think I can stub this mouse. <laughs> yeah, unlike other certain mice that feel like they'll fall apart or get crushed anytime. <clears throat> Jewels. The coaching on the new Pulsar series is simply excellent. This is probably one of my top three coatings available on the market. And of all the mice that I think are actually usable, this would rank number one. Zowie coating, for example, is also great. I love that. But so far, they don't have any mice that meet my requirements to be considered usable. And yes, I would much rather use this Pulsar coating over the Lamzu mice, the Lamzu coating. Sorry, Lamzu, I love you guys, but I do like the Pulsar coating more. The coating on this feels extremely grippy, yet soft to the touch, and it's rubberized. And in fact, the quality of the coating is one of the main reasons I've actually been maining Pulsar mice for a little while now. So if you guys know, I went on a trip to China and I took only one mouse with me on my entire trip and it was this X2H. The sensor and placement. The sensor is the same 3395 used on all other updated Pulsar mice. It features 4K, not much to say here. The placement, however, is a little bit further back than I would prefer. Nonetheless, it still somehow performs fine in-game. Now, if you were to compare this to, say, a Zowie EC2CW, it's actually slightly more upwards than that one is, so that's a good thing. This was the same experience I had on the EC2CW, that while that also had a further back placement, even more so than this, there was no feeling of, hey, my sensitivity is a little off, or the mouse being less responsive to movements, horizontal swipes feeling like they're on an angle instead, spray control pull downs feeling off, things like that, none of that really ever happened. So while not also feeling extremely precise and high accuracy and just super responsive like the HTS Plus, this is more than fine. Meanwhile, there are other ergos out there that feel completely off. <coughs> Death adder. Moving on to clicks. This is probably the most important thing to talk about on the X-Lite V3 for me. If you watched my review of the X2H, you'll know that I had major complaints about the clicks being stiff, which to this date, Despite having loosened a little after me using this mouse for an extended period of time, it's still stiff. And in fact, it's stiff enough that it actually feels like my gameplay is being affected. My click timing sometimes is off, or sometimes the excess force required to clamp my fingers down on the mouse to actually cause a click causes unwanted micro movements inside my hands, or my fingers tense up and then I can't control things. 
So as a result, my expectation for the x V3 were down in the gutters in this department, but holy hell, I was wrong. I was so wrong. The x V3 features the same opticals with the new Pulsar Blue encoder as the X2H, but for whatever reason, it feels significantly more crispy and lighter to click down on compared to the X2H I have. There is also little to no wobble on the buttons itself, there's no loose feeling, and in fact this is really making me reconsider my entire assessment of the new Pulsar lineup of mice. I can't tell if I got really lucky with this unit of x 3 or if my Pulse High X2H unit was actually faulty, and this does then bring in a question of QC. From what I do know, my X2H was one of the first batches of the new generation Pulse High mice of all of them, so the X Lite was a later release and also a later batch, and therefore I'm going to give benefit of the doubt to Pulsar that maybe I just low rolled on this unit of the X2H, and that now all the X2H versions, all the new lineup mice should feel like this, and hopefully they do because this is now the way to go. I will reconfirm this with the next Pulsar mouse I try sometime in the future. But back to the point, the x V3 so far is perhaps my favorite click of all time now as a balance of feeling and performance. Some mice feel really nice to click on, but the clicks don't perform well enough. Some perform really well like the HTS Plus, but then they feel like shit and they wobble a lot. So this is so far, I think my favorite click of all time now. Moving to weight and distribution, the mouse weighs in at 55 grams, which for a mouse of its size and build is fantastic. It's not too heavy, it's not too light. The main magic lies in weight distribution. The X2H felt a little bit front heavy despite the huge hump, but the X-Lite V3 feels very well distributed in this case. And at least holding it and gliding it around on the mouse pad, I can't notice any imbalancing at all. If anything, you can notice how the mouse just glides perfectly horizontal without any sort of movement. Let's give more of a glide test there. My, obviously me pushing it's a bit inaccurate ap application of force and the mouse pad's also not necessarily fully consistent, but you can see that. Uh, obviously skates also have to do with that. The weight of the mouse is spread over a much larger size on the X-Lite in this case, compared to say an X2H. The X2H is supposed to actually weigh less, but it feels a lot more dense in hand than the X-Lite as a result. And therefore, the x light really just does feel like nothing, and it moves around as you would want it to. Once again, magical job done by Pulsar. Now, skates and replacements. The stock skates on the new Pulsar mice are excellent. I'm pretty sure this might be the same as the old ones. I haven't replaced the ones on this x V3 because I wasn't expecting to enjoy the mouse enough to use it often. But at this point, I will be using the mouse often, and I don't even feel obligated to replace the skates anymore. So the mouse pad used has a lot to do with this as well, and the 414 arrow here definitely works really well with the Pulsar skates. I haven't tested it a lot on many different mouse pads, but for the 414 arrow, this is more than enough. So the last point, and the most important point, other than clicks, is shape and comparisons. Now unfortunately, I don't have the two mice I really wanted to use as comparisons here on hand anymore, which would be the Zowie EC2CW and Lamzu Thorn. Yes, I know, I'm a terrible reviewer for not having a million mice on me, but when the bros come to me and say, hey, I want to use this, I won't say no. And so for this part, the source of information will just have to be, trust me, bro, you guys are going to have to trust me. So first of all, the x V3 here has always been a clone of the Zowie EC series. Uh, that's what everyone refers it to, and this size matches the EC2, which I've also previously reviewed in the EC2CW. So in that video, I barely spoke about the shape because... The mouse has been around for so long that I feel like everyone has tried it at some point, and there's infinite reviews online in that regard. You don't even have to watch EC2CW, just watch EC1A, EC1B reviews even regarding shape. So instead, let's talk about what's different on the x Lite versus the EC. And I'll say this right here, I like the x Lite V3 shape more than the EC2. The little minor changes make quite a significant difference to how the mouse feels in my hand, and I'll explain why. So in order to better do this, let's first look at what's different between the two mice, and we'll throw up an ELO shapes diagram to help illustrate this as well. The main important thing to know is that the x V3 is taller on the hump section by a little, and the grip width throughout the mouse is a little bit wider, despite being a shorter mouse. Now for my 21 times 12 hands, neither mouse feels comfortable for me to full palm grip, which is what I used to do. So instead, if I wanted to do that, I'll need the large size x Lite or the EC1, but in this case, I can do somewhat of a palm claw hybrid on the x Lite, which feels a little more awkward to do if I was using an EC2CW. 
So in order to cater to the bigger hands, the taller hump on the X Lite feels just a little bit more filling. Combined with the insane coating quality, it really contributes to having good contact here on the ball of your palm. Now, in addition, the wider grip width means that your hand is stretched out more instead of having to pinch your fingers together. And that stretching of your palm horizontally lowers the height of your palm as well. So the increased height combined with the decreased height in your palm to begin with because of the stretching, because of the width, just makes this mouse feel a lot taller and more filling in my palm than the EC2CW did, which there feels flatter, right? The EC2CW feels a bit flatter than the x Lite here. And for big hands like mine, the x Lite V3 here definitely feels a lot more comfortable to do some sort of like a hybrid claw getting contact here on the ball of my palm. So the next important thing to note is that the left side here also feels less aggressive and doesn't dig into the thin eye eminence as much or the meaty part of your thumb section when compared to the EC2. And that's also because of the wider grip width, you flex your thumb out a bit more, so this curve doesn't dig in as much. And the lack of digging in also seems to provide a bit more palm mobility so that I can use my thumb to go back and forth without this being stuck into my thumb. All of this put together just means that the x Lite V3 at this size is a lot more enjoyable for my palm slash relaxed claw hybrid grip here than the EC2 given my hand size. Now I do think if you had maybe smaller hands, the EC2 will be okay. But in this case, I think this really does strike a nice balance for me. Now as for say Lanzu Thorn, that mouse is significantly different to the x Lite than the EC2 is. And I think for that comparison, you might as well just go watch my Thorn review where I did an in-depth comparison to the EC2. So that pretty much applies the same for the x Lite. So who should buy the x Lite V3? Well, if you want to try Nergo, you want a safer, more comfort and relaxed grip style oriented mouse. The x Lite V3 here is the best available on the market, period. It has no negatives at all that I can think of. This is one of the most perfect mice I've ever used. If you want a more aggressively shaped ergo, then go for the thorn. Once again, congratulations to Pulsar for making one of the single best lineups in the entire industry. Keep up the good work. The x Lite V3 here is the real deal, and I am thoroughly impressed.